Welcome to the science lesson and the name of the lesson is Matter and Materials, the last lesson in science for this term. Let's begin on page 196. Name two solids you see around you, a piece of wood, a table or a brick. Name two liquids you see around you, water and milk. Name two gases you know about, oxygen and carbon dioxide. When we look around us, we see tables, chairs, books, clothes, water and many more things. Air is also around us, but we cannot see it. All these things are called matter. So matter is something that has mass and occupies space. When we look around us, we see tables, chairs, books, clothes, water and many more things. Air is also around us, but we cannot see it. All these things are called matter. So matter is something that has mass and occupies space. I repeat, matter has mass, that means weight, and occupies space. Now let us go to the different states of matter. Now the different states of matter is solid, liquid, and gas. Now the very easiest example that I can tell you is ice. Now ice is the solid form of water and liquid form of water is water itself and the gaseous form of water is water vapor. Oh no! Monu, I have told you a million times before to play football in the ground outside. Now see what you've done. Sorry, Mom. Mom, can I please ask you a question? Ask. Mom, why is it that things like oil flow and things like glass do not? That is because oil is a liquid and glass is a solid substance. Solid, liquid and gas are the three states of matter. But how can we identify if a substance is solid, liquid or gaseous? Each state of matter has some properties of its own. These properties help to identify a substance as solid, liquid or gaseous. Let us study about these properties. Firstly, let us understand the properties of solids. See this book. It has a definite shape and occupies some space. Now that we have placed the book on this table, yet the book has not changed its shape and still occupies the same amount of space as before. Solids have a definite shape, a definite volume and a definite mass. Things made up of wood, metals, stone, glass, clay, paper and plastics are all examples of solids. Now, let us have a look at the milk in the jug. It seems that milk has the same shape like that of the jug. Let us see what will happen if the milk is poured in the glass. As you can see, the shape of the milk changes from the shape similar to that of the jug. And it takes the shape of the glass. This proves that a liquid does not have any definite shape. It willingly takes the shape of the container it is filled in. Also, whether the milk was in a jug or in a glass, its quantity or volume remains the same. This shows that liquids have a definite volume. And liquids flow too, right mom? Right my dear. Liquids flow from a higher level to lower level if poured on the ground. Thus we can say that all liquids have a definite volume and mass, but not have a definite shape. And the liquid substances flow. Water, milk, oils are all examples of liquids. Now, see these balloons. They have air inside it. Air is a gaseous form of matter. Now let us see what happens if I transfer all this air into a jar. The air spreads in the jar and occupies the entire space inside it. This shows that gases do not have any definite shape and it spreads in the entire space available to it. Now, let us see what happens if I transfer all this air into a jar 
which is double the size of the first jar. As you can see, the air occupies the entire space inside the second jar too. This proves that gases do not have a definite volume. Their volume changes from one container to the other. Since air is a gaseous matter, we can say that gases do not have a definite volume and shape and it spreads in the entire available space. The air that we breathe, water vapor that comes from boiling the water, smoke coming out of running vehicles are all examples of gaseous form of matter. Wow! It was so interesting to learn about the properties of these three states of matter. Now, I can easily identify different substances as solids, liquids or gases. Matter exists in three states, solid, liquids and gases. Matter is made up of very tiny particles called molecules. These molecules are so small that they are not visible through naked eyes. We cannot see molecules, you have to view them through a microscope. Molecules of matter are constantly moving. The arrangement of the molecules determines the state of the matter. Matter exists in three states, solid, liquids and gases. Matter is made up of very tiny particles called molecules. These molecules are so small that they are not visible through naked eyes. Molecules of matter are constantly moving. The arrangement of the molecules determines the state of the matter. Now in a solid, the molecules are closely packed with no intermolecular space and that forms a solid. In the liquids, they are little apart with a little bit of intermolecular space and that is why solid liquids have no particular shape. They take the shape of the container into which they are poured or kept. And the last is gas. In gas, the molecules are far apart and there's a lot of intermolecular spaces among them. And that is why gases also don't have any specific shape. Now coming to solids. In solids, the molecules are closely packed. Due to this type of arrangement, solids have a definite shape and occupy a definite space. In solids, the molecules are closely packed. Due to this type of arrangement, solids have a definite shape and occupy a definite space. Liquids. In liquids, molecules are less closely packed than in solids. Liquids occupy a definite space, but they do not have a definite shape. They take the shape of the container in which they are kept. In liquids, molecules are less closely packed than in solids. Liquids occupy a definite space, but they do not have a definite shape. They take the shape of the container in which they are kept. Gases. The molecules in a gas are wide apart. Gases have neither a definite shape nor do they occupy a definite space. Gases. The molecules in a gas are wide apart. Gases have neither a definite shape nor do they occupy a definite space. Now chain of the state of matter. That is states of matter that is solid, liquid and gas, they are interchangeable. From solid you can make it into liquid, from liquid into a gas. So that is why the states of matter are interchangeable. Matter can exist in different states. For example, water can exist in all three states. As I told you, water is water in the liquid form, as ice in the solid form, as water vapor in the gaseous form. So water as such can exist in all the three states of matter. The three states of water can be interchanged on heating or cooling. Like if I take water and I heat the water, it changes into the gaseous form. Now these water droplets are cooled and condensed to form the original liquid water again. Now if you take water and keep it in a freezer, the water solidifies to give you ice that is the solid form of water. Water is a liquid. When it is heated, it changes to water vapor, the gaseous state. When water is cooled, it changes to ice, which is solid. Matter can exist in different states. For example, water can exist in all three states. The three states of water can be interchanged on heating or cooling. Water is a liquid. When it is heated, it changes to water vapor, the gaseous state. When water is cooled, it changes to ice, which is solid. Similarly, wax is a solid which melts and becomes a liquid on heating. 
it becomes solid wax when cooled. Similarly, wax is a solid which melts and becomes a liquid on heating. It becomes solid wax when cooled. Now, wax is a solid. When heated, it becomes a liquid. It melts and becomes a liquid. Once it's cooled, it becomes a solid again. Now, changes in matter. There are two types of changes in matter, a physical change and chemical change. Now, a physical change. Physical changes are changes in which no new substances are formed. For example, you tear a piece of paper, the paper remains the same. There is no new substance that is formed. When you tear paper, no new substance is formed. Chemical change. When there is a formation of a new substance, it is a chemical change. In chemical change, new substances are formed. If paper is burnt, ash is formed. This is a chemical change. There are two types of changes in matter, a physical change and chemical change. Now, a physical change. Physical changes are changes in which no new substances are formed. When you tear paper, no new substance is formed. Chemical change. In chemical change, new substances are formed. If paper is burnt, ash is formed. This is a chemical change. Now, when paper is torn, you get the one piece of paper torn into two or three of bits. The chemical composition of the paper remains the same. There is no chemical change in composition of the paper, so it is a physical change. But when you burn paper, the paper burns and becomes ash. The chemical composition of the bit of paper is changed completely and you get ash. And that is a non-reversible change and hence it is called a chemical change. So remember, a physical change, no new substance is formed in a physical change, but new substances are formed in a chemical change. And a chemical change is a non-reversible change. Solutions. Now, here, when you take a bottle of water, that is known as the solution to which you add sugar or salt dissolved is known as the sugar solution or the salt solution. Now, where, what happens if you add a tablespoon of sugar to a glass of water? The sugar will dissolve. Same if you add salt, the salt will dissolve. We say that sugar is soluble in water. When sugar mixes with water, it is said to be that sugar is soluble in water. The substance that dissolves in a liquid is called a solute. Now, sugar dissolves in water, so sugar is called the solute. Salt dissolves in water, so salt is called the solute. The liquid in which a solute dissolves is called a solvent. Now, the liquid in which this sugar has dissolved or salt has dissolved, it is called the solvent. And here, the solvent is water. And the liquid that we get after a solute dissolves in a solvent is called a solution. So when the solute, that is sugar or salt, dissolves in the solvent, that is water, the result is a solution. There are some substances that do not dissolve in a liquid. They are said to be insoluble. For example, sand is insoluble in water. For example, if you take a little bit of sand and pour in the water, the sand settles to the bottom. It is not soluble in water. These are called insoluble substances. Watch what happens when sugar is added in the water. Sugar disappears into the water. Does the sugar settle down after some time? Well, it does not. This is a simple experiment that introduces us to some important terms. When something mixes in a liquid and disappears, we say that it has dissolved in it. In this case, the sugar dissolved in water. The ability of a substance to dissolve in a liquid is called its solubility. The substance that gets dissolved in the liquid is called a solute. In our experiment, 
Sugar is the solute. The liquid in which a substance dissolves is called a solvent. Water was the solvent that we used to dissolve sugar. The liquid that we get after the solute is dissolved in the solvent is called solution. Yes, we just made a solution of sugar. Let us now continue with our solubility experiments. We have with us common salt, pepper powder, potassium permanganate, fine sand, vegetable oil, alcohol, vinegar, and glycerine. Let's add a small amount of each one of these separately into water one by one. Okay, let's begin with common salt. Here it goes. Now, some stirring. And what do we see? Common salt has got completely mixed with water. That means we do not see these particles in water. So, common salt is soluble in water. Now, let's do the same one by one with all the other samples. Let's test the solid samples first. You can see that pepper powder and sand particles are seen in water even after stirring. So, they are insoluble in water. Potassium permanganate has got completely mixed with water. So, potassium permanganate is soluble in water. Let's test the liquids now, one after the other.
alcohol, vinegar and glycerine dissolve in water beautifully. Observe that they do not form separate layers. Each of these can mix in water in any proportion. We call this property as miscibility. When two liquids mix with each other, they are called miscible liquids. Oil forms a separate layer on top of water without mixing with it. Oil does not dissolve in water. Oil and water are called immiscible liquids. Now, when you know what solubility really is, let us check out why this happens. The solute particles break down into smaller particles. When the solvent is stirred, the mixing happens faster. The particles of the solvent start making space for the particles of the solute. Watch the solute particles evenly spreading out in water, forming a uniform concentration. This is how a solution is made. Here's a summary of the results of our experiment. 